Greetings, lovely students. Welcome back to classes. And for those of you who are freshmen, welcome to your college career. I am sure none of you imagined that you would have a year like this in college or in your lives, you know, trying to learn uh, under the limitations of a pandemic. But I can tell you that I'm going to make the best of it. And I, I am feeling pretty good about um, uh, my class with all of you. Uh, this is a class that I absolutely love to teach. Um, and so I am not gonna let a pandemic uh, get in the way of my love of teaching and of course my love of film. Um, so as you of course know, this is an introduction to gender in cinema. Um, and my name is Gisela La Torre. I am a professor in the Department of Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies. I've been teaching in this department for 13 years. Um, and uh, you may call me Gisela, you may call me Professor La Torre, or you may call me Professor G, which is actually my personal favorite. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna uh, kind of give you an overview of the class, uh, some of the expectations, some of the the details uh, about this uh, blended delivery that I'm doing this semester. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to actually turn to um, our syllabus. So I have it popped up here on the screen. Um, and as you can see from the get go um, here at the beginning, I have all the information that you need. Uh, everything from class times to the location of the class during the portion that we meet uh, in person or via Zoom streaming. You see my office hours. As you can see, my office hours are virtual. So you have here the Zoom invite for the office hours that happen twice a week, uh, Wednesdays and Fridays, 3 to 5 p.m. Um, as I scroll down the syllabus, as I said, I'm going to go over a few uh, elements of the syllabus. And I wanted to start out with the course description. And of course, I just want to point out that um, you do have the statement here for disability accommodations. I think one person has contacted me about that in the class so far. But please, you know, get in touch with me or get in touch with, uh, you know, the Office of Disability Services here on campus. And you have the information here. <clears throat> So now to the course description, uh, I'm going to read a little bit and I'm going to ad lib um, as we go through the syllabus. So basically, this course is a critical overview of the history of gender in film as seen in the Hollywood movie industry and beyond. And I want to underscore that um, it's really important to me that we look at films that are not necessarily part of the Hollywood industry, films that could be considered independent or movies that are actually created outside of the US, outside of the Hollywood, you know, kind of um, machinery uh, that, you know, produces movies. Um, and of course, that will give you a sense of how gender representations in film uh, happen differently in different kind of uh, context, uh, in particular context outside of Hollywood and outside of, of the United States. All right, continuing. It is, uh, this class is designed to introduce students to the complexities and the ambiguities of the film medium and its representations of gender, race, sexuality, uh, disability, and social class. Together, we will examine how films evolve over time, reflecting different histories and styles. And so as, you, as you can see from the syllabus, we're actually starting kind of like at the beginning of film. We're starting with silent movies. Um, and then we'll just move forward to, you know, to some very uh, recent films. And during that kind of move in time, you'll be able to see the changes in representation that happen. So in the process, uh, of learning the history, learning the you know the uh, you know the the different kinds of gender representations that we see in film. Aside from that, you will also examine. Um, I'm sorry. In the process, we will also gain some basic skills uh, in film visual analysis and critique, and that's really important. So you will be able to distinguish a long shot. 
uh, from a medium shot. You'll be able to uh, gain an understanding of how a film's editing really influences the storytelling, the way in which the, the narrative of the film evolves. Uh, you'll be able to distinguish different approaches to lighting, to framing. Um, those are all important elements. Uh, that allow us to uh, to analyze a movie, but also to get at the gender politics of that film. So continuing, throughout the semester, we will be operating under one key understanding. Film is not just mere entertainment. Though many of the images that we see on screen are fictions, they're made up, right? They still shape our behaviors and social relations in very real ways. And I think that that's, um, I mean, I cannot stress that point enough, that we have to take sims, films seriously um, with regards to the messages they send. And, and films are the ways in which we are socializing to the world a lot of times. And so you have to uh, think very thoughtfully um, uh, about how those representations shape the behaviors of yourself, of those around you, right? So, so the idea is to take films seriously, even if it's a movie that is supposed to be merely fun and entertainment. So, um, and then finally, one other aspect that will be really important, um, in, as I say in the last sentence of the course description, is that we're also gonna consider the possibility of a film as a tool for social justice and change, right? How can filmmakers use movies to bring about change or to comment on an injustice in society? And, and that's gonna be very important to talk about because a lot of times, you know, the big, you know, film, you know, production companies, you know, are out there to just sell films. And so making a film that is more than just about selling the movie, it's about raising awareness, um, can be difficult uh, to produce uh, because movies are expensive uh, to, to make. Um, and so that's uh, an element that we will, we will be exploring in class as well, you know, to what degree is this movie wanting to really raise awareness about a social injustice and potentially to bring about change. Okay, so that's kind of like the the general very, you know, very kind of uh, impressionistic view of the class. Now I want to turn to the more pragmatics, which is, you know, what does the hybrid delivery of this class look like? Um, and so as you can see here in the syllabus, I have a section just dedicated to this hybrid or blended delivery format. So in WGSS 2317, the class will be delivered in a hybrid format, format, part online and part in person. We will meet only once a week on Fridays. That's from 1245 to 205. So that's when we meet like in person, right? But you will need to carry out a considerable amount of work online in preparation for those Friday meetings, okay? We will not be able to have a, a proper discussion if you don't show up having done all the steps that precede our Friday meetings. So I recommend that you adhere to the following weekly schedule. So Tuesdays, watch the PowerPoint lecture, upload it to Carmen. And those are gonna be posted by, Tuesday, by 9 a.m. on Tuesdays. And the PowerPoints are really important because they, um, how could I say, they provide a, the larger context for the film that you're gonna watch uh, uh, during that week, okay? Number two, Wednesdays, watch the weekly movie and complete assigned readings. There's always gonna be a reading, um, uh, an article or a reading that is that you are required to do. Then on Thursdays, uh, you can take the Carmen Weekly Quiz. Uh, and those quizzes are available from noon on Thursdays to noon on Fridays. And what the quizzes will cover is basically uh, information from the readings, from the PowerPoint lecture, and from the movie itself. Um, uh, and then Fridays, after, after you've done all of that, then you attend discussion and you can attend in person or via online streaming. I'm gonna keep, uh, I'm gonna have a Zoom call for every Friday. Um, and I just wanna say that the Friday meeting is the only portion that takes place in real time, okay? Everything else uh, happens, you know, that you do on your own kind of outside of class. And so I guess also what I wanted to say is that now this schedule that I've given you, you can adjust it, you know, to suit your needs, okay? But just know that you are required to show up 
for discussion on Fridays, having completed steps one, two, three. Okay. Uh, so in theory, you could um, do everything on Thursday, you know, uh, watch the lecture, watch the movie, do the reading, uh, take the quiz. I don't recommend it. You know, it sounds like it's a little too much for one day, but you could do it that way. Okay. Um, other elements, uh, some uh, elements about technology requirements. You need the Zoom app or the Zoom client, reliable internet access, and then some software work for word processing for you to do your papers and your assignments, um, as well as your tests. You know, something like uh, Microsoft Word or, you know, pages, uh, um, something like that. Okay. Um, I want to say something, uh, a couple of things about attending Friday discussions. Now, you, as I said before, you have the choice of attending class in person or via Zoom. I do recommend, however, uh, attending in person. I think it makes a discussion livelier, more personable. And I just want to also make, uh, you know, make it very clear that we will be uh, adhering strictly, strictly to CDC guidelines. And so we're all going to be wearing masks. We're all going to be observing social distancing. I'm going to come in there with my disinfecting white piece and, and, you know, and clean all my surfaces. You have a packet that allows you to do that as well on your desk. Right. Um, and so I just wanted to put that out there. However, if you rather attend class via zoom, that is an option that is open for you. Okay. Um, however, I do have some um, Zoom attendance etiquette. Uh, so for those of you who are attending class via Zoom, uh, please make sure that you keep your cameras on during class. Being able to facilitate, oh, sorry, being able to see you will facilitate class discussion. Uh, I remember last semester when we went, when we all went online, all the students just would turn off their cameras and basically I was having a conversation with a whole bunch of like black squares, you know, so that is not really helpful. So definitely you can keep your microphones on until you're ready to speak in class. But, you know, please keep those cameras on because it'll help us, you know, kind of see each other and just be present for each other during class. All right. I'm going to scroll down and skip a few parts of the syllabus. Um, uh, no required text. All the readings are in Carmen. So that's great. Um, then I go over some of the class requirements. And for me, one of the most important parts of this class is in class participation. Um, those Friday discussion meetings are going to be dedicated solely to our conversations about the movies that we're watching, about the articles that we're reading about you know, the PowerPoint and the context that I provide in the lectures that I upload. Um, and so if you want to get a good, a grading class, you know, make sure you come in prepared to, you know, to have a discussion. And I know that under COVID-19, it's tricky, you know, it's, you know, it might be a little awkward, but you know, we can still do this. Okay. And I'll do my best to facilitate discussion, to bring people in into the fore. Um, so so it can be done okay all right a few other things carmen quizzes there will be weekly carmen quizzes uh happening uh, every week and the quizzes uh i think I, I don't know if i mentioned this before will uh basically cover the lecture the online lecture that i upload every week it'll cover the the, the movie of the week and it'll cover the cover the readings okay and I think I'd also mentioned that before, the quizzes are available noon from noon on Thursdays to noon on Fridays. Um, you have a couple of papers for this class as well. You have a scene analysis paper uh, where I will give you um, a selection of scenes and you're, uh, you're asked to write a detailed visual analysis using uh, the cinematography terms um, that you will be um, assigned for this week. Um, you will also have a feminist film review paper where I will ask you to uh, select a movie from the year 2020, our year, um, that is available over streaming or in cable. Uh, I don't know, you may have a DVD Blu-ray copy of the movie. Um, as long as it's 2020, a, 20, a movie that was released in the year 2020, 
it, it works for this assignment. And so for this, uh, 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 you know, for this assignment, you will write a review of the film, putting particular emphasis on gender representations. And so um, review the film using the feminist lens that you are learning in class, okay? Um, we also have a couple of exams, a midterm exam and a final exam. Um, these will be essay exams that will be posted on Carmen. You will have 24 hours to finish them. The first exam will cover the, the, uh, the first half of the class and the second exam, which is the final exam, will cover the second half of the class. Um, uh, the final exam is not uh, comprehensive. Uh, again, it just covers the second half. All right, I'm gonna continue skipping over a few parts, um, just trying to give you the highlights of the syllabus. Um, and so of course you have a section here uh, listing the films um, that will be required, that you will be required uh, uh, to watch for this class. Um, you, will, uh, you will be asked to watch uh, on average or in general one film per week. Um, and I've listed all the films that we're watching. We are watching a total of 12 movies throughout the semester. Um, and they are listed here. Most of the films are available free of charge uh, for you. Our first film, which is for next week, is uh, the film uh, The Cheat. And that one is actually available on YouTube for free. Uh, a lot of the movies are either available on Canopy or available in the secure media library. Um, those are also available for free <clears throat> um, with your OSU login. Um, there are, however, three films in class that will not be available uh, through those um, uh, uh, um, platforms. Um, the film Waru number eight that you see here is actually um, available on Amazon Prime. Um, you don't, if you don't have Amazon Prime, you can rent it for $3.99 via YouTube. Or um, if you are unable to do that, I will screen the movie on October the 28th at 12.45. I'll do it through Zoom. I'll, I'll just be sharing my screen. Um, but if you're able to e either rent it um, or maybe if you don't have Amazon Prime, maybe you know somebody, you know, who has Amazon Prime, you can share the movie. Uh, maybe that person can share their account with you. Um, any which way, whatever works best for you, um, go for it, right? We have other, uh, other examples. Uh, also, we're going to be watching Al uh, Alfonso Cuaron's Roma, uh, a movie from 2000 and, uh, 2018. And that one is available only on Netflix. Uh, however, I will also be Zoom screening the movie on November the 18th at 12.45. Um, and then this, our final film of the semester, The Assistant, same situation, you can rent it. Uh, it costs $5.99 or for the different platforms, Google Play, YouTube, Amazon, or you can watch the Zoom screening of the film on November the 25th at 12.45, okay? Uh, so the major, with the exception of those three films, all the other films that, that we're watching in class um, are available to you, uh, you, you know, at no cost. Just a couple of things. Uh, I highly recommend that you watch the movies and potentially my lectures also on a decent size screen. Um, I don't think you're going to be able to really capture the detail of movies and the um, um, and the, just the aesthetics of a film if you're watching it using your cell phone. Um, so I would say at least a tablet, you know, your laptop, and if you're able to even watch them on the big, not the big big screen, but the like a, a television, uh, um, that would even be better. Um, a few other things. Um, I know I mentioned that most of the films in the Secure Media Library are not closed captioned. That's actually a correction. Most of them are closed captioned. Um, the only movie that we're watching this semester through the Secure Media Library that is not, not closed captioned is uh, the movie Bound. Um, however, um, I can provide information about an alternative place where you can watch the movie 
and where you can get the closed captions. So again, you know, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, but this is just, again, a general overview of the, of the movies. Okay, a few things about attendance um, and other policies. Um, you are required to attend class every Friday, um, either in person or via Zoom. Um, however, you are allowed to an excused absences for those Friday discussion meetings uh, without affecting your grade, but anything beyond that uh, will be five uh, or 10 points off or 5% of your grade, okay, for each additional absence, okay, because those discussions really bring everything together at the end of the week. So it's super important that you're there. It's, it, uh, it's important that you're there also because you you want to make sure that you also get, earn a good um, attendance, uh, not attendance, I'm sorry, participation grade. And so that's super important. Um, now, I do know that this is a particularly challenging moment. Um, this pandemic is affecting our lives in you know really dramatic ways. Um, and with that, I, I I say this because in our personal emergencies section of the syllabus, I do recognize that you know things happen in our lives, right? That prevent us from completing the work for our classes. You know, whether it is that we are unable to show up neither online and neither in person to, uh, to, uh, to Friday discussions, or maybe, you know, you are unable to finish uh, an assignment um, for the class, whatever it is, I'm going to work with you, okay? Let me know keep the lines of communication open if there's anything that is going on that is preventing you from finishing work uh, for the class, from coming to class. Um, so just let me know. All right, I'm gonna skip over other things. Now I wanna underscore that I am skipping over a lot of things, but I, you know, you are responsible to re read everything. I'm just trying to hit the highlights today. Uh, okay, just a few things on uh, class discussion etiquette. Um, a lot of the movies that we're watching raise some really uh, controversial issues around gender, around race, around social relations, around social justice. Uh, these are issues that, you know, have created a lot of heated discussion and disagreement, not just in college classrooms, but in the world at large, right? Um, and so you may expect to disagree with a classmate. You may expect to disagree with me, okay? And that's fine, of course, you know? But I just want to make sure that whatever disagreement, whatever discussion that we have in class, you know, is civil, is respectful, okay? So no personal attacks or heckling or loud talking, loud speaking, cutting people off, things like that, you know. Let's just keep it really civil, and I make that commitment as well, of course. Um, uh, and so just wanted to be, keep that out there. Um, I also want to say a few things about, you know, the challenge of teaching and learning in these difficult times, and not just because of the pandemic, but also because of the racial tensions, the increased and heightened racial tensions that we experience just this past summer with the deaths and or the murders of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. Um, and um, a lot of times, you know, we'll bring up issues, especially um, there's one week where we talk about the representations of uh, black men on screen. And we're gonna make connections, of course, to the Black Lives Matter movement and how those representations connect with the struggles that are happening uh, in our country. Uh, so there'll be times that it, you know, the coming to class or going through the materials for this class is gonna feel exhausting. It's gonna be feel difficult. It's gonna feel stressful. Uh, and I get it, I get it. I Sometimes I'm like overwhelmed by, you know, by teaching the subjects myself. Um, and so, but I guess what I have to say is that, that that sometimes that's like the way we learn. We learn, we learn through struggle. We learn through these kind of stressful moments. Um, 
And I also want to make clear that um, I am teaching this class from a feminist perspective, from the perspective of, you know, opposing uh, uh, gender oppression, from the perspective of uh, also engaging in anti-racist uh, practice and teaching. Um, and because I come from that perspective and I'm teaching from that perspective, um, I cannot remain silent about um, the policies and politics of our current administration. Uh, and I know this is going to feel this is going to be an incredibly interesting semester because we also have a major presidential um, uh, election. And in a class where we talk about film and we talk about how gender and racial representations affect us, uh, I think inevitably we're going to think about how gender and race is represented in the media when we see the political debates or when we keep an eye on how the news media is representing, you know, the candidates, right? Um, and so, uh, and so I want to be very open that I come from a anti-racist feminist perspective where, where I have to be critical. It's my responsibility to be open and critical about what is happening in our administration. But having said that, my goal is not to get you to be on my side or to like, I don't know, brainwash you, right? Um, I mean, my goal is just to, you know, present these different perspectives, right? Um, and at the same time, I will be very open and very um, and to provide space for, you know, for differing opinions and differing perspectives. OK. All right. Just a few other things. Uh, yes. Trigger warnings. Um, so some of the images that we will see and discuss in particular in movies might be graphic and disturbing in nature. And I usually um, provide students with a timestamp of a scene that might be difficult to watch in movies. Um, and so I commit to providing proper warning to the classroom before we present potentially upsetting content. Um, and if you have health concerns that make it impossible or damaging for you to watch certain imagery, let me know. I will work with you to find alternatives. Having said this, though, um, you know, do expect some discomfort in uh, in the class material from time to time, right? Because a central goal of the WGSS classroom is to expose students to histories of representational violence that are often difficult to take in. So, and again, that discomfort, that stress that I talked about, sometimes it's, it's part of that learning process, okay? All right, uh, I'm going to say a few things about, you know, the calendar. Um, and as you can see, each week uh, of our class is kind of encapsulated in this little, this or, the, or this rectang rectang re rectangles that I have in the syllabus. And what I recommend is as you're going through the class, check on this, on this, uh, uh, on this calendar every week. And because each, um, each rectangle gives you kind of like the, the activities for the week. So that way you can keep up with the class and say, oh, we are in week one. What do I have to do? Oh, I should watch the PowerPoint lecture, then this introduction, which is what you're doing now, right? Oh, I should read over this film studies analysis guide. Oh, I should make sure I, you know, I finish reading the syllabus. Oh, yes, and I've got to have to take the Carmen quiz. And now I am ready for Friday's class. And so each week is going to be like that. Okay, and so this calendar section of the syllabus, it's going to be your best friend uh, because it's going to give you kind of step by step instruction of what you are expected to do in class every week. Okay. All right. And so I just want to touch on some of the themes that we're going to be covering. Each week is going to be a different theme. Okay. And we're starting up next week with the theme of silent film. And what is interesting is that a lot of the gender and racial tropes that are familiar with uh, uh, to us in film have their roots in the very early history of film with silent film. And so we're gonna be talking about what are some of those you know, representations. And we're gonna watch a film called The Cheat that really kind of gives us an idea of how perceptions around gender and race happen in, you know, in film. Okay. 
Um, we are going to, in week three, we're going to be talking about, we're going to introduce the term the male gaze. Uh, this is a term that comes from feminist film scholars, you know, who've analyzed the movie and who've realized that a lot of movies, especially mainstream movies, especially movies that come from the Hollywood industry, uh, do not have a very diverse audience in mind. They have a particular audience, right? And so a lot of films are made with that audience in mind. And a lot of times that audience is defined by white, male, heterosexual, cisgender spectators. And so we're gonna be watching that, that week, we're gonna be uh, using the genre that is called film noir as an example of the male gaze. Um, we're gonna be watching a very classic film noir, Double Indemnity from the 1940s, um, and talking about how the movie you know, uh, works with the film, uh, the, the, excuse me, the, the, uh, the male gaze. And we're gonna be introduced to a Spock character called the femme fatale um, that often appears in film noir. Week four, we're gonna be talking about this genre called the neo-noir, where film noir uh, experiences this kind of resurgence in popularity in the 1970s, and we're gonna be watching a, 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 a very interesting neo-noir called Bound. Uh, and we're going to talk about, you know, how um, the neo-noir era, you know, borrows from older films, but also innovates in different ways. Um, I'm just going to talk about a couple of uh, other weeks. Uh, week five is we're going to be talking about my favorite, favorite genre in film, which is, of course, science fiction film. Um, and we're going to be talking about the history of science fiction film, um, the recurring themes that we see in sci-fi, um, and we're going to be talking about how sci-fi uh, really introduces us to this uh, uh, new tropes around race and gender that sometimes do not appear to be about race and gender, but if you look at them closely, they are very much about race and gender. Um, that week we're going to be watching, again, one of my favorite films, uh, Ex Machina, um, uh, which is a film that came out in 2014-15, so it's a fairly recent film. Um, and we are going to be talking about a very uh, prominent trope that appears in that movie, which is the trope or the image of the cyborg woman, you know, this uh, you know, this character that is like, you know, part machine, part human, robotic, and who's created for the needs of men. Um, and so the question is, why do we create movies uh, with such a character? Okay, well, I'm going to stop here. Um, I welcome you to go through the syllabus and look at some of the other themes that we're going to be covering in class. Um, and I just, again, want to close off by saying that, you know, I know this is a challenging time, um, but I'm feeling uh, good and confident that we um, can still have productive and meaningful learning happening in class. And I also want to underline again that given that this is such a challenging time, I will exercise as much flexibility, as much compassion as I can, um, because I know that this is, you know, that it might be difficult for you to get through the semester or for some of you. Um, and so I will do everything I can to, you know, to kind of help you out, to support you as you uh, begin this new um, this new semester. I also want to underscore that I hope the, 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 the flip side of that uh, can also be practiced in class. That is that you exercise, you know, flexibility and compa compassion with me as your professor, as your instructor, um, as well as your other uh, teachers this semester. Uh, because for us too, this is hard. You know, we've had to like transform our teaching in really, really radical ways. A lot of times we're experimenting with these technologies we've never used, and uh, and we're doing things that are kind of experimental in the sense that we've uh, we've never done these these things before. Um, and so there is bound to be glitches. There is bound to be hiccups along the way, um, and. Uh, we may have to readjust a few things here and there. And, uh, and so 
just know that it's not, it's also difficult on our end. You know, we love teaching. Uh, I know I speak for many OSU professors when I say that. Um, uh, but, you know, it, 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 it's going to be an interesting semester. So cut us a little bit of slack here and there, and we will greatly appreciate it. Also, keep the lines of communication open. If something is not working in the class, you know, just let me know. Uh, we'll find a way to tweak it, okay? So anyway, well, I hope you are having a fantastic first week of classes. I will see you either in person or via Zoom, but I'll see you in real time in class on Friday. Um, and please don't hesitate to just drop me an email if you have any concerns, if, you, if there's something that is not working for you, okay? Um, other than that, signing off, Professor G. See you guys on Friday. <laughs>